How much money do you think you would need to be able to retire? It's a question that a lot of people have asked their financial advisors, and it's one that seems to have a different answer for just about every time it's asked. And the reason for that is simple. The amount of money that you need to be able to retire depends entirely on how much money you think you can earn in retirement through interest and dividends, and maybe even a part-time job if that's part of your plan. And perhaps even more importantly, how much money you're actually going to need to survive in retirement. And that number seems to change each and every time you ask as well because projections of things like medical expenses change as times go on. And I'm sure that those of you who are nearing retirement that are watching this video know just how big of a deal medical expenses can be and just how they seem to keep going through the roof, particularly for retirees. But that doesn't really help us. It doesn't give us a goal to strive for as we're going through our working careers. We may not be able to come up with the exact number that we're going to need, but we should be able to come up with a good guesstimate, something that'll be at least close and give us something to strive for. And today, that's what I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to be covering something called the 4% rule and how it gives us that goal to shoot for. I'm also going to be talking about some other factors to keep in mind when you're using this rule of thumb, as well as some situations you're going to want to just totally avoid the 4% rule entirely. Let's get started. So what is the 4% rule? Well, it's a rule of thumb that's used to determine the amount of funds that you will withdraw from a retirement account each year. It's also sometimes called the safe withdrawal rate because the money you take out consists mostly of interest and dividends, and therefore your principal either stays the same or it goes down a little bit, but not too much to be unsustainable. In fact, in 1994, a financial advisor by the name of William Bengen did an exhaustive study of historical returns in the market, focusing heavily on the severe market crashes of the Great Depression in the early 1970s, and he concluded that even during those hard times, there was no historical case that existed, at least as far as he could find, where the safe withdrawal rate exhausted a retirement portfolio in less than 33 years. And for most of us, 33 years would easily cover our retirements. The idea behind the rule is that once you have approximately 25 times your annual expenses in retirement saved, you should be able to retire with reasonable certainty that you could survive until death on your savings. Because at that point, the amount you take out for your annual expenses would be approximately 4% of your retirement savings. And when I say 4% of your retirement savings, I mean your entire retirement savings, anything that's been earmarked to use just in retirement. So this would include your 401k, your IRAs if you have any, and any other ways that you've saved a nest egg for your retirement. So for example, if you had $450,000 in your 401k, and if you do, good for you, and $50,000 in a personal IRA, then you would have $500,000 in all of your retirement accounts, and your initial withdrawal on the first year of retirement, if you're following the 4% rule, would be 4% of that $500,000, or $20,000. Some other factors that you're going to want to keep in mind when using the 4% rule, in addition to keeping an eye on your expenses, is to account for inflation. And the 4% rule, believe it or not, actually allows you to increase the amount you withdraw to keep pace with inflation. And you can either account for this by just setting a flat 2% increase to your withdrawals each year, which is the target inflation rate by the Federal Reserve, or by just seeing what the inflation rate actually was for the year and adjusting based off of that. Now you might be wondering, how could this possibly be? I mean, if you increase how much you'd withdraw to keep up with inflation, won't you eventually run out of money? It's a legitimate question, but as it turns out, no. And it's because over the long term, the market goes up. Now there are a lot of numbers that are thrown around by financial advisors about how much the market actually goes up. I've heard anything from six to 10% a year on average, and I'm going to be conservative here and go with the 6% end of the scale. So let's go back to the example I used earlier in the video. You start off retirement with $500,000 in savings, and in the first year of retirement you withdraw $20,000, or 4% of your total savings. And I'm also using a compound interest calculator here, and it assumes that whatever you withdrew, you withdraw right at the start of the year. So the $20,000 is going to be withdrawn on January 1st of every year. And I'm only noting that because it makes it a worst case scenario. If you were to say, withdraw $20,000 over the course of an entire year, but you did it in installments of $1,600 each month, you would be able to earn interest on the rest of that money throughout the majority of the year since you hadn't withdrawn it all at the beginning. And then your ending net worth would actually be higher than it will be in this example. So on January 1st, you withdraw $20,000, meaning you only have $480,000 left in your nest egg. 
But over the course of that year, the market goes up by 6%, which means the value of your portfolio at December 31st would be $508,800. Now in year two of retirement, you increase your withdrawal by that flat 2%. So on January 1st of the second year of your retirement, you withdraw $20,400. That brings your portfolio down from $508,800 to $488,400. But again, the market goes up 6% which means that by December 31st, the total value of your portfolio has been brought up to $517,704. And if you were to continue to calculate this out for 30 years, your ending net worth would be $787,716.90. Almost $300,000 more than what you started with at the beginning of your retirement. But of course, this is just a rule of thumb. So there are situations where you're gonna to want to avoid using the 4% rule altogether. One of those situations would be if your portfolio consists of a lot more higher risk investments than say your typical index funds and bonds that are usually seen in a retirement portfolio. This is because obviously, higher risk investment can go down a lot faster than your typical retirement portfolio investments, which can be extremely devastating, especially if it happens early on in retirement. Also, this rule of thumb only works if you stick to it year in and year out. If you're not gonna be able to do that, then you don't wanna use this as your retirement goal. Because even violating the rule for one year to splurge on a major purchase can have a severe effect on your retirement savings down the road. Because the principal from which your interest in dividends that you survive on is compounded gets reduced right at the beginning. Let me give you an example of how this works. Say that in addition to taking out the $20,000 your first year in retirement to survive, you also decide to treat yourself to a new car. Figuring that you'll be able to travel a lot during retirement, you want to get something that's good, big, and comfortable, as well as reliable. So for this example, let's say you get a new Toyota 4Runner for about $35,000. Now I know that you could probably find it cheaper used, but not everybody likes to buy cars used. I know my dad didn't, and besides, this is just an example. So you drop $35,000 on a new car, and you still have to have money to live so that $20,000, like we said, still does come out of your retirement account. Meaning that on January 1st, you only have $445,000 of your original $500,000 left over. Now admittedly, the market still does go up about 6%, leaving you with a nest egg of $471,700 at the end of the year. And even if you were to stick to the 4% withdrawal rate for the rest of retirement, which would be 30 years in this example, by the 27th year of your retirement, you would be taking out more than you actually earned in interest in dividends just to survive. And by the 30th year of your retirement, you would withdraw $35,516. But with the interest, dividends, and market appreciation your portfolio got, you would only have actually gained $33,209 in value. So your principal is starting to go down by a couple of grand a year. And that could put you in a pretty dangerous position should the market actually go down for a couple of years, as we know it's prone to do. Or if you have some kind of medical emergency, which we already discussed, can be very expensive. Now, I don't want to make it seem all bad. I mean, unless you retired early, after 30 years in retirement, you're probably well into your 90s and don't really need the money to last very much longer. And even in the previous example, you still do end up with $586,000 in your retirement savings after 30 years. It could be worse, right? Yes, it could. However, I do want to bring your attention to the difference that this one car purchase made. The purchase of a new car at the beginning of your retirement made your ending net worth that you could have left as an inheritance to your children or grandchildren or donated to charity go from $787,000 all the way down to 586,000. That's a difference of over $200,000. And it's all from just that one splurge. But that'll do it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, or if you learned something, be sure to like and subscribe. I've got a lot more of these finance videos coming out in the near future, as well as some more book summaries and some other fun stuff on the way. But with that being said, thanks for watching and have a great day.